Hi, it's Professor Todd here, and today we're going to be reviewing the first section of your research proposal. This is the overview and context section, and we'll be looking at both the components that you need to include in this section as well as an example. So let's begin here with the components. Um, you need to do a few things in your overview and context section. The first is to provide any sort of background information that's necessary and just a general overview of the topic that you will be presenting. Presenting. Next, you want to provide some current context or current events that pertain to or relate to this issue. This helps your audience sort of frame the issue within the current context of what's happening right now. Then you want to establish the specific issue that you wish to address in your research topic. That is, make sure that you narrow down to the specific concerns that you are looking at related to the topic you have chosen. Finally, um, you want to establish both exigency and um, show the audience what's at stake. That is, explain why this matters right now. The exigency is what currently is causing you to pursue this issue, what makes this a important and timely issue, and why should your audience care about it. So it's not enough that you find the issue compelling. You need to establish some concern um, on the part of your audience. Then there's one um, additional uh, component that may or may not relate to your overview and context section, and that is to identify any key terms or key legislation that's related to the issue. This isn't going to necessarily happen in every overview and context section, but if there are important terms or important laws or important pieces of legislation that have been uh, court cases, for instance, that have been established relating to your topic or your issue, this would be the place to provide your audience with an overview of those. So let's look at um, an example of an overview and context section. So this is the first paragraph um, of the overview and context section on a proposal addressing mental health and mental illness really in college students. While the COVID-19 pandemic has rightfully garnered national concern and much attention has been given to addressing it, another pandemic is raging among college students with little done to stop it. This is the pandemic of mental illness. So right off the bat, the person has provided a nice overview of the topic. And you'll see with the next few statistics, they not only establish the exigency and provide sort of some current context, but they also use these statistics to make the audience care about the issue. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 537 people between the ages of 15 to 24 have died so far from COVID-19. By comparison, roughly 1,100 college students die from suicide each year, more than double the number of deaths by COVID-19 in that age group. Additionally, nearly half of all college students report suffering from anxiety, while more than one in three suffer from depression. With mental illness rates growing and a death rate nearly twice that for COVID-19 in college-age people, we must begin to address this pandemic of mental illness in students. So here you can see a few things. These statistics provide some context with the COVID-19 by comparing them to the COVID-19 pandemic, which most people are familiar with and most people have an emotional reaction to. Um, the student has not only established the um, exigency and the need to address this issue by showing how deadly this issue is for college students, but also they've created sort of an emotional response in their audience by connecting it to the emotions that we, are, we have sort of tied to COVID-19. So this is a great way to both contextualize and introduce the issue, as well as provide some exigency and, and help the audience feel connected. Um, notice here too that whenever statistics are used, um, we've included some internal citations, those parenthetical citations. These are important anytime you bring in information from an outside source, so be sure to include those. And we'll talk more about how to cite them when we get to the bibliographic section of the proposal. Here we have the second paragraph of the overview and context section, and this is where the student really narrows down and establishes the issue. So they've introduced the topic of mental health broadly, and now they're going to narrow it down and focus and let the reader know exactly what issue they want to focus on. What is making our college students so anxious and depressed? Researchers have identified several factors, including increased pressure for good grades in order to be marketable in a tough economy, increased student loan burden, social media, and a variety of cultural and environmental causes. While understanding these factors is important, perhaps more important is how we as a society address them. 
With so many young people feeling anxious and depressed and more than one in 10 reporting suicidal thoughts, America must act now to solve the crisis with the same vigor and energy we are giving the COVID-19 pandemic. So here you see that the author has really narrowed down and focused the issue. So we've started with just the general topic of the mental health crisis in college students, and now we've focused down to the specific issue the project wants to address, and that is figuring out how to solve this crisis um, so that young people are less anxious, less depressed, and report le if, and fewer suicidal instances. So this is really the going to be the crux of the issue for this particular author. Next, we're going to be discussing the um, critical conversation section, so be sure to keep an eye out for that video.